If you have a paranoia, it doesn't mean yet that no one is spying on you. Hello everyone, it's Maggie's Recap. Today I will tell you about the movie The Invisible Man released in 2020. Watch out, there will be spoiler. On the cover of darkness, in fear of being discovered, Cecilia Cass escapes from her husband, technological genius Adrian Griffin. She has left almost everything except the most necessary things and documents at their home, which stands on a cliff by the sea. Who is she? A victim of technological maniac or a criminal covering her tracks? Anyway, first things first. The horror movie The Invisible Man was released in March 2020. This is the third directional work of Lee Wannell. And this is not just a horror story, but a full-fledged thriller with a deep semantic connotation. Director touches on themes of psychopathy, egocentrism, sociopathy, phobias, persecution mania, domestic violence, helplessness, and other actual social problems of the modern world. The movie begins with a panorama of a raging night sea and a yellow light coming from the windows of a lonely house in the distance. And these shots aren't very promising. It's 3.42 a.m. and Cecilia, our main character, has insomnia, so she sleeps out of bed, trying not to wake her husband up. From the beginning it becomes clear for the viewers that the woman is hiding something. As quiet as a shadow, she slips into a stash in the wardrobe to pick up a bag with valuables in it. She configures the video surveillance system so that she can watch her husband sleeping on the screen of her smartphone and leave unnoticed herself. Try not to make noise and constantly looking back, the heroine escapes from home. At the last moment, the dog stops her. We understand that the woman is so attached to the dog that she cannot just leave it with a security system on the collar. She's trying to deactivate it, but suddenly alarm gets triggered and Cecilia hastily hopes the high concrete fans to escape. And here she is, all scared, standing on the desert highway. A single car drives up the road and stops by her. There is a friend who's come to pick her up. And at the last moment, her one sleeping husband breaks through the glass of the passenger window trying to stop her, but he fails, and the car with two horrified people leaves. Two weeks later, we see Cecilia in another home. She's afraid to be stopped, doesn't go outside and shades her webcam with a marker, jumping at every sound. Her sister comes to visit and brings some news. Adrian, her husband, is dead. He has committed suicide and also get recognized as a brilliant inventor. But as a partner, Adrian was very abusive. He controlled every Cecilia's step and every thought. Actually, he was trying to control everything and everyone around himself. So now the viewers can understand who's who in this story more clear. Brilliant and wealthy but paranoid inventor with control issues and his terrorized lover who has found the strength to escape from his abuse. What's interesting is the movie has a very unique sound design. There is no background music. Instead, there is a strange silence which emphasizes every little sound. In his will, Adrian has left Cecilia the house and $5 million. That she will receive, if only she is not charged and is mentally healthy. What can really go wrong, right? Cecilia decides to spend this money on helping her friend's daughter to get an education and the chances for a better life. But something goes wrong and strange things starts to happen around Cecilia. When she prepares breakfast on the stove unexpectedly, the flame by itself increases several times doors open by themselves. At the job interview, Cecilia discovers that the briefcase she has prepared earlier is empty now. Seems like she's going crazy. And one day she loses consciousness and wakes up in the hospital. The same sleeping pill that she had used on Adrian the night of her escape is found in her blood. Cecilia suspects that her husband has faked his death 
and is now trying to drive her crazy. She meets his brother, Tom, and insists that Adrian just found a way to become invisible. But neither Adrian's brother, not even her friend, believe her. Meanwhile, someone sends accusations to her sister Emily using Cecilia's account. Emily is offended and kicks her sister out. She's convinced that Adrian is dead. The main character is in complete despair. Sydney, daughter of Cecilia's best friend, James, is trying to support and comfort poor woman. But someone invisible hits a teenage girl. And now James considers that Cecilia has serious mental issues and that she has attacked his daughter. Cecilia, using the last of her willpower, tries to find the cause of her problems. She climbs into the attic of the house and finds Adrian's knife and his phone full of photos of her sleeping. She hears footsteps on the stairs but sees nobody. She hits the invisible man with a paint can but unfortunately the antagonist escapes and gets rid of the traces of the paint. Right after, the woman runs to her old house on the seashore. There she finds a strange suit, an ingenious invention of a control freak Adrian. The suit was a building cameras that makes the one who wears it invisible. Cecilia tries to hide the find, but gets attacked by the other invisible man. The dog, who loves Cecilia very much, comes to the rescue, and the woman escapes from the mansion again. Cecilia tries to tell her sister about the find, but unexpectedly, the invisible man cuts Emily's throat and put a knife in Cecilia's hand, making her look like a murder of her own sister. Cecilia is sent to a hospital for the criminally insane to wait for court proceeding. And suddenly, it turns out that she is pregnant. Adrian always wanted children with Cecilia, but she knew that this would make her a hostage forever without any of a free will. Tom, Adrian's brother, visits Cecilia in the hospital. He promises to help in exchange for her return to her former life with Adrian to raise their child together. Cecilia declines such an offer. She manages to steal a pen from Tom's briefcase and cuts her veins with it to attract the attention of her husband, who she believes is the invisible man, provoking him to act and reveal his presence. The plan works. The antagonist tries to stop the desperate woman, but takes a few punches that damage his invisible suit. Damaged suit starts to strobe, so the guards notice him. The man tries to escape from the hospital, beating up some stuff he meets along his way. Cecilia catches up with him and tries to shoot with the gun she's taken from one of the security guards. The invisible man informs her that while she's pregnant, he will not touch her, but he's gonna kill her best friend's daughter, Sydney. The heroine heads to the house where the invisible man beats James and his daughter. Cecilia makes the man visible using the firefighting form and then shoots him. What's interesting is, unlike most of the movies of this genre, the viewer has no certainty about who really is in the invisible suit till the very end. Or even what's really going on there. Is it all a product of Cecilia's morbid imagination? or the invisible man really exists. Cecilia, as most of the viewers, I guess, believes that the man in the suit is Adrian, her husband. However, it turns out to be his brother, Tom. The police finds Adrian later in their home by the sea. He's alive and unharmed and makes a statement that he was held hostage by his brother and that he is also an innocent victim of the situation. The main character does not believe a word he says. She's sure that Adrian has planned everything to look like he's innocent. The reunited couple meets later for a dinner to discuss Cecilia's pregnancy. She is trying to provoke him to reveal the truth by saying that only an honest confession can reconcile them. Adrian doesn't know there is a wire on Cecilia. There is James, her friend, overhearing their whole conversation on the other end of the line. Adrian denies everything, but when Cecilia starts to cry, 
He grinning with a lot of joy starts to talk about one of his cruel acts towards her. That puts a smile on her face. And on the pretext that she needs to powder her nose, she leaves the table to put on the invisible suit. Being invisible, she cuts the throat of her ex-husband, imitating his real suicide on the cameras. James breaks into the house and tries to find out what happened. Cecilia assures him that it was a suicide. A friend notices the invisible suit in her bag, but leaves it on her conscience. Can such an ending be considered as a happy ending? Adrian motives raise a big question while watching. Just like in the novel of the same name, written by Herbert Wells, the protagonist has no complex or lofty motives. He simply uses high-tech equipment to please his own darkness, asserts himself at the expense of the weaker, and finds joy in continued attempts to destroy his wife's personality, suppress her willpower and makes her obedient, lonely and easy to control, as all the abusers do due to their mental problems. This movie is about monsters living among us and toxic relationships destroying individuals. Very unexpected subjects for the horror movie, but because of its non-triviality, The Invisible Man was highly praised by critics. Subscribe to the channel so you do not miss new videos. Press the like button if you enjoyed the retelling and of course write in the comments what do you think about the movie. Thanks for watching, bye bye!